Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Femi A3. We're going to unbox this today. This is going to be part of a review series. In this video, we're just going to unbox it, inspect it, set it up, and just kind of see how it all looks on the controller. In the next couple of series, we're going to do the main maiden flight test. We're going to go through all the functions, and we're also going to do some range testing and see just kind of what cinematic video we can get. Xiaomi has really brought to the table some great drones. If you missed my Femi X8 SE review, that's kind of the upgraded model of this with the foldable arms. Did a full series on that and I'm not done with it yet. But today we're just gonna go check out the A3 and for a budget drone, we're gonna see what we get. Okay, so let's get this thing out of the box first. So opening the top and here we go. So we got a couple of instruction manuals. We got some packing stuff holding it in. And there's basically the A3. Let's go ahead and just pull out everything and we'll check out stuff more in depth. So this looks like around six propellers. We've got our charger here, a USB cable. Let's pull out the drone real quick. There's the drone. We'll inspect that much in much more detail in just a second. In the very back here, we have a wall charger, and it looks like I got the foreign charger. I am in the U.S., so I have a few adapters. I'll have to adapt that, but that's going to plug into the charger there. And then over here, it looks like we have like a balance extender port for the battery. And then here's the controller, and there's the controller. Nothing else in this box and let's kind of inspect everything we got close up. So we've got our charger first and then the wall plug just plugs into the charger. We do have this extra thing here in the package. Let me break this out real fast and see how this all works. So this is gonna plug into here and that's how we're gonna charge our battery. So just a very cheap charger to keep the price down for such a cheap product here. But hopefully the drone performs fairly well. Here's the battery. Take it out of the back here. I just wanted to show how we charge this thing. So after we plug that into the charger, we pop open this little silicone guy here. And this one can only go in one way. So we just plug that in, plug that into the wall, and that's how we're charging our battery. And by the way, speaking of the battery, this is a 2000 mAh 3S battery. So uh, three cell and it's 11.1 volt. When it does plug into the drone itself, we're gonna have our connecting uh, pins right here on the top there. Anyway, let's see what else we got. So we got this little bag here. This is gonna be a USB cable, and that is just a micro USB to USB on the other end. It looks like this is gonna be just for charging our controller. Let me pull the controller up here before we take a closer look at it. And very similar to a lot of the uh, Femi products or Xiaomi products in general, we have this little Thing that comes out here. Now this is an interesting controller that has a micro SD card slot. It's like a DVR. Since this is using a 5.8 gigahertz analog FPV, I believe, uh, we can plug in uh, and record to that card there. And so there's our charge port. We just plug that little guy in there. Anyway, before we get more in depth in the controller, we're still opening up a couple more bags here. Here's actually the last bag, and these are all the propellers. These are not collapsible propellers, but they are push lock. You can see how they have a push lock mechanism one, two, three, four, five, six, and some of them have this little red mark on them, and some of them don't. So that's gonna be clockwise or counterclockwise propellers there. We'll put those on in a second. Anyway, before we get to the drone, let's just take a quick look at the controller. So these little stubby short antennas, and the directions are saying that this is gonna be a 2.4 and a 5.8. And that's gonna be kind of similar to a lot of drones where they have a dual frequency for control and video. And the 5.8, um, we're gonna to have to see how that looks, but I believe that's an analog 5.8. They chose to do that on this one. Um, so you don't have to have any phone or app. We're gonna to have to see how all that goes. Anyway, sticks on the controller, um, pretty well done. They are little aluminum top sticks. They have this rubber surrounding them for some good grip. Don't feel too tight but there is quite a bit of resistance there. And the antennas don't snap in or anything, but at least they can kind of pivot down. That's as far that way as they can go. They can only go this far that way, and then that's as far out as they can go. On the back of the controller, we do have these little trigger buttons, and they do click in. On the very top, we have rollers. So this roller is just kind of notched and just keeps going, probably for like an EV value adjustment. And then this one here is a roll, stop, and spring back in both directions, probably for like a gimbal adjustment. Little tiny uh, thumbstick here, and it goes into, 
Looks like four directions there. We have a home button here. We've got our power button. And then we have a physical GPS and 2S, which is that possibly sport mode? We're gonna have to test that out, but there is a physical button there. And that pretty much is it on the controller, just the screen. And this does look like possibly about a five inch screen. So we'll see how that looks when we boot it up in just a second. Anyway, finally getting to the drone and here it is guys, the Femi A3. It's taken me a while to review this, but I just wanted to get my hands on it finally and give it my take. You can see it looks very familiar to the Xiaomi 4K drone. Remember the larger one they had? They had the same kind of arms and they had that kind of anodized aluminum mesh in the arms. It looks very similar. The motors are these tiny little motors and they do have that push lock apparatus spring on there. So it's gonna be working hopefully pretty well. Light here and then we have our feet that come down and we do have a very nice rubber end on our feet for landing and uh, so it doesn't get too scuffed up. It is a pretty minimal design, but it looks like it's gonna work fairly well, hopefully. You can see that we have a red notch on some of the arms, and then we have no notch on some of them. Let's put on one uh, propeller really quick together, guys. So I've got one of the propellers that has those little red notches there, and this is one of the arms with the red uh, notch as well. So all we do is push this down and in these slots, just kind of holding the motor while we do this, pushing it down and then we're just, it can only slide one way and then it pops back up. And it's really as easy as that, even though the props aren't collapsing down, um, pretty simple to take them off and put them back on. So that's on, pushing, sliding, and whoop, right off. Cool, easy enough. Moving around to the front, you can see actually that we have the GPS little hump on the back. That's where the GPS is gonna go because this does have those smart GPS functions. And here's the camera. So there is no uh, camera guard whatsoever. It's just hanging out there. There's nothing in the box either, no foam or anything. So just be careful of this guy when you're taking it around. And there you go, so it's a two axis gimbal. This does not have any yaw stabilization. So something very similar in respect to perhaps the uh, DJI Spark or the Parrot Anafi where there is no side to side stabilization, just up down pitch and then our roll. So we may see a little bit of jerky movement when we're turning the head like this. We're gonna have to see how that is in the flight test. Anyway, it looks like they did a good enough job in there, kind of dampening the whole camera. You can see how it's hanging off of about four supports, little rubber dampeners way up inside there. So we don't wanna pull this down too hard or they might pop out. You can see that that's pretty opened up in there. So we're gonna get some good airflow in the drone back to the battery. You can see how there's just a lot of space and it's not really uh, closed off there. Speaking of vents and stuff, turning it over and looking at the bottom, look at all these vents. So there's a bunch of vents for all the peripherals. There's a bunch of computer chips in there. There is one little uh, silicone door here. There we go, so we have this expansion port. Okay, yeah, if I remember correctly, uh, this one actually has the option to put on like servo connectors. So it has, I believe, two extra connectors. And I think those are gonna correspond to these buttons on the controller. So with this one, you can click one or the other. These are labeled A and B. So if you put like a servo on there, if you wanted to do kind of a do-it-yourself uh, fishing drop mechanism, you know, Velcro or stick a servo right here. Anyway, on the very bottom is the power button. So you see that there? Interesting how they chose to put it on the very bottom. Battery compartment, there's those pins where the battery's gonna push up against you. And just looking inside so you guys can kind of see that real quick. It's uh, fairly simple, fairly opened to all of the circuit boards and electronics, so we have some decent cooling there. Almost missed the onboard micro SD slot that can record the high definition video here. Here it is here. So make sure we wanna put that in before we put the battery in. And then there's also a micro USB slot here so you can plug in and it looks like probably to update the firmware, we're gonna have to plug it into a computer on this one. And on the very, very top, there is the Femi logo. So that's pretty much it guys. There's nothing really else to look at. Let's go ahead and slap the battery in and I wanna boot this thing up, put it on the screen so you guys can see what it looks like on the controller before we go fly. So I'm just gonna turn this controller on just by pushing and holding, I believe. Yeah, so there we go. We got a Femi logo coming up on the screen and it's kind of waiting for a signal from the drone. It's just a blue screen and then we have a bunch of the telemetry on the top and the bottom. Pop this guy in, making sure the battery connector's on the top. Pushing in, satisfying click, so we know that that's going nowhere. 
And then when we're ready to turn on, I think we just press and hold. Let's see if that kind of does it. There we go. Got to hold it a little bit longer, guys. There's that camera going up and down. Cool. And I heard some beeping on the controller and check that out. I actually have um, FPV on the screen. Okay, so as you can see, we have a bunch of stuff. Let me bust out the pen here. And it says, system preheating, please wait. Unable to enter GPS mode is um, flashing on the screen. So it looks like you might have to wait a little bit on this one. Press any key to exit. All right, so if I press home here, will that exit? There it goes. So I pressed home and it exited. And uh, now we can go ahead and take a look at what's going on on the screen. So here is our FPV. Now this should be, gosh, is this like an actual 5.8 gigahertz? There's a slight bit of lag, but um, it does still look like it's it's pretty good. You can see that. It's not like a race drone type of FPV, uh, zero latency, but it is pretty close. Very simple, but at least you have a bunch of information there. Okay, and that's adjusting the EV. So that's great for a cheap drone like this. You have a EV roller adjustment. Seems to want to beep three times each time I roll it and positive is actually going to the left. You can see that screen is getting brighter and we can go a little faster. Let's go back to zero. Can't click that in. Let's try the left side here, roller, and we're going down. So cool, you get some, at least you'll, ha you'll have the ability to rotate the camera down like regular, more expensive drones. And that's how fast it is all the way down, all the way up. Okay, and check out this little uh, thumb dial here. So if we press to the right, it says insert TF card, so that's probably gonna be looking like our library we could go through. Let's press, press to the right again. Let's try pressing to the left. Cool, so we're gonna go through this whole menu. It looks like we're in smart flight, camera settings, GPS mode settings, wireless video channel settings. So we still have the ability, guys, to adjust all of the advanced types of modes that more expensive drones have. We can do calibration, RC pairing. We can also check out our flight record. That's cool. System settings, about. Let's try to go into a smart flight. Return to home, auto takeoff, auto landing, orbit, follow me, selfie, headless, fixed wing, cinematic, and then exit smart flight. Wow, press left or right. Looks like we gotta press left on this guy. Camera settings here, clicking in. Video resolution. If I click in again, 1080, 30, or 25 frames per second. That's our limitation. Pressing to the left, we have picture quality. We have fine or normal, 40 megabit per second or 20. And we can adjust our EV value from here apparently. But why would we really wanna do that when we can adjust it through that roller, right? ISO, we can do auto or click in and here we go we can adjust our iso manually if we wanted to so at least that's a possibility you can also adjust wow our shutter speed amazing on a cheap super cheap drone like this we have auto 4s 2s 1s one quarter second so not a whole lot of options but at least we can do that saturation it's set at 64 i'll just leave it there i guess and that's set. Contrast is at 64. Um, TF card or SD card capacity. Format the card. Quite a bit of options, man. I'm surprised there's so much for this cheap drone here. GPS mode settings. Uh, limit flight velocity. It's at 18. I believe that's in meters per second. So we'll just leave it at 18. Limit of altitude. So 120. Can we go higher? 220, 320, 420. Five. Okay, so we can adjust it um, individually there. So say we can go up, you see in red, we have that number. And if we go over to the right, then we can adjust that number there. So we'll just leave it at 120. Limit of flight distance, it's set at 500. I'm gonna push this all the way up. Wow, okay, we can go all the way to, I'm gonna set it to 99999, because I think that's the highest number we can choose. Let's try it and uh, press in to save. Yeah, it saved it on the screen there. Cool. 
So that's our max, 9999. Altitude of return to home. This is what I kind of might want to change. You can also, as we found, manually adjust this all. I'm going to set it to 40. Whoops, let's set that to 40. And clicking down in, and those three beeps determine that it's saved. Home point update. Let's see, drone current position or RC's current position, awesome. Okay, so that's everything in um, GPS mode settings. We have wireless video channel settings. I'm gonna leave that alone. Flight mode settings, let's see what we got. Sport mode, wow, so it's off. What if we turn it on? Sports mode, on. Wow, we got a bunch of beeps and it totally took me out of the screen. On the very top, GPS, switching this over. Sport, all right, so cool. So now that switches to sport, you just have to make sure you turn that on in the settings like we just saw. It looks like the attitude, I don't know what that's all about. Okay, that's what it does. So it's turning the S over here either into Addy or sport mode. So we all know that Addy mode is not using GPS to lock when you let off the stick. So it'll drift with the wind, you can fly faster, but then if you let off, you don't really have that guided flight with GPS. So. I would advise to definitely just keep the attitude mode off unless you really need to use that. Custom settings, we have a right dial. We have it uh, as EV right now. You can change it to PWM and we wanna leave it at mode two, but we can also choose one, two, and three for different uh, countries and ways of controlling the craft. Calibration, we can do uh, compass. Definitely do that before you fly in the flying field. RC. Gimbal Horizon Calibration, IMU Calibration, Flight Record. If we go in here, Real-Time Coordinates, Status Codes, FC Sensor Data, Gimbal Sensor Data. Wow, so they've done a pretty in-depth job here on this such a cheap craft, actually. If you really wanted to get in there. Date and Time, Units. Oh, here we go. For all you U.S. guys, you can choose... Imperial, nice, let's change it to Imperial. Feet and miles instead of meters. RF mode setting, check this out. A lot of people wanna know, CE or FCC. You can switch this right in the controller. And look at that, I'm in the US, I'm gonna choose FCC. So the only thing I'm slightly disappointed about is I didn't see anything to configure these two buttons. Another flight in the series is we'll see if these can even work with those um, extra channels that are on the bottom of the craft. We'll put like a servo on there or something and we'll see if we can work that. Let's press down. Okay, this gets us right into our video settings. So at least you have some quick access to um, video settings, to smart flight modes. And this one does all these smart things. So we're gonna have to test all those out in the flight test. I guess that's kind of it. Um, I wanted to kind of just show you how the camera moves up and down and how it kind of stabilizes before we um, end this unboxing. So as you can see, I'm rotating it left and right. And it is doing pretty good at keeping that camera super stable. Let's get it in focus here. And uh, forward, up and down. So it's gonna definitely um, physically stabilize those two axes forward, back, rolling left and right, but it's not gonna physically stabilize that, see? So that thing's gonna move, and let's see how it looks on the screen when it does that. So if it's moving like this, it's got a little bit of help, it looks like, from possibly um, digital stabilization, kinda like uh, the other drones do in this category. So anyway, guys, I think that's it. Thanks for tuning in for the Femi A3 unboxing. I hope you really enjoyed that, and it was very informative to you. I try to go as in-depth as possible and show all the pros and the cons. My videos are extremely honest, so this flight test is gonna be very honest. I'm gonna tell it just like it is, good in certain areas, or if it's bad in certain areas, I'm gonna tell you about it, and we're gonna find that out in the flight test. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, links down in the description down below if you wanna check the pricing on this, more of the specs, pick one up for yourself. And I will have a coupon code down there for some money off. And so go ahead and use that and pick this up for a great price if you're interested. Also, don't forget, flight test coming up. I'll have that linked up here possibly and in the description, definitely down below, I'll have the series on this A3 drone so you can look at all the videos as we explore it together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the flight test.